so if I want to, I want to give uh, uh, this Chris, uh, I want to give read write, and then uh, read right here and read right here. So what you could do is, uh, and then uh, for using the letters, a read write is for owners and groups. So you do UG, UG then plus RW then Chris okay and um, you see the permissions have changed the previous permissions were this so if it already if the permissions are already there it's not going to change it but if it's uh, not there then it's going to change similarly you could use um, instead of minus you could plus you could use minus to take away the permissions okay there you go right here and uh, you mask and uh, is there any question about the concept of you mask Okay. How's the practice going? Are you guys been uh, practicing it? Because um, it's really important for you to practice it, for you to learn the job. Two hours is minimum per day. All right, so <clears throat> we're done with permissions. So. Okay, let's see here. See it mode plus X. Okay, so you we have like this one is this. So most of the time uh, it will be end up being for uh, for the uh, others if you're not specifying over one so if you want to give uh, like write execute read okay then if you want to be write, it's going to go again uh, to this What does that mean? Hmm. Okay, so it's uh, behaving uh, differently here. But anyway, uh, you get the concept here, and then I will make this uh, document even better after today, and then uh, that way you could uh, practice on it better. Okay. I have uh, some other commands here, so like uh, <clears throat> there is one command here. If you want to know the calendar, you just type cal, and it will throw out the calendar here for you. 
and then uh, if you want a calendar for uh, November 1976, it gives you the calendar for 1976. Let's see if it's going to do anything for 1080. So it comes up really fast. So you type in cal command and then the month and then the year. And if you're not doing it anything, I will bring up the present <clears throat> date and then the calendar. And then to check, uh, there is also a date command. You type date. Date command will give you today's date and then at the same time it will give you the <clears throat> I suppose it will give you the time also but we using the date command you could uh, add in um, other stuff too like date plus and then the percent M it will give you the month it just it will give you the month just the number and then uh, when you type H it will give you the name. What uh, month is this? So uh, November is 11 month, and then when you type uh, percent H, it will give you November. Okay, and then if you type percent Y, and then hit year, enter, it will tell you what year is this. Okay, and then when you do hmm, Y, Y, okay. Okay, so the uppercase Y gives you 2018, the lowercase Y only gives you 18. So let's try two lowercase. So this is nothing here, this is just a typo. So for, for you to get ER, you just type Y. And if you want to type uppercase Y, it give you the full date, date uh, year, okay? And then if you type uppercase H, it will give you the hour, what hour you are in. Right now you are in 11th hour because it's uh, 11 o'clock here uh, in East Coast. And then if you type M, it will give you month. So don't get confused, but okay, right now it's just hour is 11. It happened to be at the same time when the month is 11. But when you type uppercase M, it will give you the minutes. So it's uh, 11.35 right now, okay? So when you simply type date, it will give you the full date here. So it's a 35th minute. Thirty-fifth minute, the 11th hour, and then the date. You get the idea. You, you could use it if you're using a lot of uh, programming, then you could use this, okay? And we went over who, who it will tell you who is logged in right now. And it's only one user is logged in, okay? And let me re-log in again with another session. You could type, you could log in multiple times. Okay, I'm logged in one more time. And let me do this who again. So you see I'm logged in twice. That way when you type who, and you could actually see how many users are logged in. Usually there are like five to 10 users are logged in there. One is application, one is uh, root. Others would be, uh, you could just determine who those users are, okay? And then uptime is the time of the system. How long it's been on, it's been on for 13 minutes. Uh, the present time, how many users are logged in, and uh, all this is load average. This is my CPU, this is memory, how much is being used, and then and this is a buffer. Okay.
So we uh, we quickly went over so much, so many things here. Let me just put it down here. We went over Cal. Remember, it's always lowercase here. In my notes, if you see something uh, which is uppercase, just to determine it, it's uh, probably be your lowercase, okay? All right, so what you could do is um, it has like so many attributes to it, so let me. Date uh, plus percent M, it will give you month. And then if you type date uh, plus percent uh, H, it will give you uh, month month in uh, alpha see here what is yeah in data plus percent y lowercase y it will give you year date plus percent it will give you when you type y y it will give you year again Not sure if that's useful, but uh, uppercase Y it will give you. Uh, yeah, you just uh, just use uppercase Y. Okay, and then we'll just uh, don't worry about these here. If you use uppercase H, it will give you hour and date. Uh, plus percent M, it will give you minute. So let's try date plus percent uppercase M, it will give you minutes here. Right now it's been 40, 41 minutes past hour. Okay. Um, so I have a question that where it says the the date plus its H gives you the month in alpha. It's it's not N. Yeah, it's a lowercase H. Lowercase H. Okay. Uppercase H will give you hour. Okay. Because yeah, usually the the words. Um, correspond a little bit you know like or the letters correspond a little bit so it, it like um it represents something or it's it's like mm -hmm. uh the first letter you know is actually what it is but in this case it's h yeah sometimes the things are reserved here so and then uh, we looked at who it will give you who who will give you who's logged in. And who 
hyphen R. Who hyphen R will give you version. It will give you all run level. And then uh, we looked at uptime. I will give you the uptime for the host. Okay, what else? Can you use a query like um, date combined with uh, with who? Uh, to find a specific date where who was logged in? Uh, yeah, of course, that would be in uh, the user administration. It would be, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna come back to the user administration when we be using like administration. Oh, or, okay. It will, nice. it will, we will look into that, okay. But that would be the way to do it, um, yeah. is using the date and and who in combination yeah oh okay so if you want to run like two uh, commands at the same time you type who then uh, semicolon then type uptime then a semicolon and type date uh, plus percent uh, Yeah, let's just type date. Well, you could do anything too. Then semicolon, and then uh, type who hyphen r, and uh, it it will give you. This is first command, second command, third command, fourth command. Okay. So the, I mean, you could use some commands, uh, the single commands, uh, with a semicolon. When you use a semicolon is going to run all these commands together. Uh, unfortunately, you just have to figure it out how you want this, the output. Let me see if I put some spaces in there, if it's going to give uh, output any spaces. Mm. It's not doing it, unfortunately. Then again, what you could do is you could redirect to uh, okay. So let's see if the file is there. Mm -hmm. So it it didn't uh, do uh, the output for all the commands we were expecting. See, let's see here. Yeah, it, it gave output for only the last three. So what you could do is you could get creative here. You could just play around a little bit and, uh, you know, troubleshoot your own way. And then uh, maybe I have to give a semicolon here. So all four just came out here. Let me do cat output. Yeah, nothing is in there because nothing. Uh, so you just have to play around and figure it out uh, how you want to send it to the output file if you don't want to get it displayed here, okay? That is something you can do on your own time. Uh, let's see if you could use um, the asterisk. So. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the asterisk to match the files. So right now when we do plain old ls and then we have all this coming up, right? But uh, we don't want this. Uh, we want uh, we want just some of these uh, matching uh, cases to come up. So I do ls 
and then uh, I know a little bit uh, what file I'm looking for it starts with C and then uh, well let me put uh, the asterisk when you put asterisk anything that is starting with C will come up come up you probably know in the windows also it's the same pro same process you see it, it removed uh, whatever is not matching the case that start with C it remove all that if you want to do further more and then you want to do uh, there is no and then if you want to do further more you could type partial and then uh, type CS then uh, asterisk it will uh, it will go for first two it will match first two layer words or letters or numbers that starts with ch and then copy those and then bring autofill the rest of the letters in there and then bring the matching cases so when i hit enter what will come up the output anybody uh it should just be the the file press and press one okay let's take a look And you're right. Yep. So you get the idea. You uh, you have multiple files. Like um, let's say create some bunch of files. Touch. Uh, let me do F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, F5, then FX6, FX7 fx8 fx9 and i hit enter and then we have a bunch of files now so i'm going to do ls then f then an asterisk and then only files that start with the f is showing up and of course i could manipulate these to fx hyphen l and then that's so l is for long list that would come up and then okay i know these uh, I want to further uh, sort this out. So I want to X only only first two letters that are matching FX, and then it will autofill the rest of them in there. So these two are matching cases. So all this has uh, FX in there. So that's why you put all these files on. It's just simple simple st steps. You probably know how we could use it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see here. Okay, let's see if this uh, question mark is going to work here. <clears throat> Sometimes, uh, uh, you know, you have, um, uh, you could use the dollar sign also, LSF, and then the dollar sign. Let's see what it's going to bring up. So it says uh, no search file or directory. Okay, let me see F1. Okay, the dollar sign only works. I suppose uh, you know you know some. Maybe it probably will work for Chris. So you type ls, then you type ch, and then the dollar sign, and we'll see if it's gonna bring anything up here. Still won't do it. It should have done with uh, dollar sign for f. Okay, it's not doing it. So let me get back on to this one here and see why it's not doing it. Um, maybe let me try the question mark. What does dollar sign do? Uh, dollar sign supposedly uh, bring up uh, anything. Uh, for example, we are using a dollar sign F here. It would have uh, autofilled this. And in this uh, scenario, it would be uh, doing the same thing for um, 
f and the asterisk we used earlier it would have brought this but it would be uh, taking in more uh, characters rather than just one or two okay i guess i need to see a demonstrator because I'm, I'm not understanding yeah the that part i'll get back to your next session here but let's okay. work on the question mark here so we did ls and then we know the first letter and we don't know uh, the second letter we know like uh we know the file it has like uh, i'm sorry the file has only two uh, two letters in it so we type f and then one question mark so it's it's uh, bringing up files that starts with f and now one question mark it's gonna go and look for a file that has additional one more uh, character onto it okay if we put two question marks it's gonna bring up the files that has three in it so it's filling up this part so do you see the difference here if we have like um, a file uh, with four question marks four characters but it starts in with f let's see it's going to bring up anything so it doesn't bring up anything here but let's create a file name uh, touch so this is a four character a name of a file right one two three four and then when I hit enter, then when I run this again, it will probably bring this as a file as an output result. Did it make any sense or should I go over this again? Yeah, it makes sense. Anybody, Bashar? It's clear. It's, it's clear, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let me uh, I made a directory called um, files. Now let me go into the directory files. Then there is nothing in there. So what I want to do is I'm in a mood of like creating a thousand files. Okay, how do I do that? You could use a simple for loop command. You could type for i in, and then you have to uh, kind of have to remember this format here. Uh, and then you're telling uh, one and then dot dot one thousand or one hundred let's do one thousand okay so what it's going to do is <clears throat> when you do a for loop it's going to take this letter i and then go in there one through thousand times okay take letter i and go in there and uh, do thousand times what do you what do you want it to do you want it to do do <clears throat> you're telling it to you're telling the system to do what now we could run the command do touch what is the the command we use touch for to create files. create files okay so now we're gonna give the file name file one instead of file one here we're gonna uh, do dollar and letter i so what is gonna happen here is is gonna go and pick up i will become one and then uh, in the dollar space it will become one here then I go back into this uh, a curly brackets here and go for number two, and then bring it here and then make it number two here. So we'll have we'll have uh, 
file number starting from 1 to 1000. Okay. And then to end the command, it's called done. Okay. Let's do that. Let's see if it's going to work. It probably didn't. It failed. Let me do ls. Okay. I think I should do. I should do this in in the segments here in, in like uh, different lines. So you type this in for i in, and then uh, you type how many you want. This number could be anything, but from here till here it could be. Uh, it is you have to follow it exactly the way you want it. Okay, and then you type do. Hit enter. Then you type touch. file dollar i okay you hit enter and then you type done okay did you see for a moment it paused for a little moment and then it came back to the prompt here so more than likely it created our command so let's take a look here we have 1000 files in there how do we know we will see ls hyphen l and then we do the wc command hyphen l oh we have 1001 where do we have 1001 because there's a zero file uh that's a good question maybe Maybe you know, it has. It may have already created the file here when I hit uh, this part. Oh. Yeah, maybe. Oh no! You know what? Uh, it's counting this line also as one line. The it will give you the little results. Little results here. Okay, this, it's counting this line also. It says total size. Oh, the total, okay. 1,000 and then it's counting this as one line. It says total zero, so I'm pretty sure uh, total zero is the size, not the number of files, it's the size of the file. So I'll say all these are like zero. Yeah. When you see zero, zero, uh, zero here in the sense is the size of the file. It could be one yeah. kilobyte, two kilobyte, one MB. So do you see in a fraction of a second, you created a thousand files. Okay. And then, okay, this is how it's supposed to be the command. Earlier, I messed up a little bit. You have to do semicolon do. And then there is a semicolon again after the then you type a done command. So you could literally type this in the same line. Let me clear it. And then it, and then in, this is where you give the name of the file. So instead of file, we, I could type just fx and then hit enter. So it's done now. So this folder has 2000 files now. We will say 2001. There you go. Output is one. Number one is the output is telling you how many total you have, and then you have 2000 files in there. Let's take a look. Okay. Now. Do you see how rapidly we could like manipulate this and then uh, we could create like 1000 files here? We could, uh, once you get the concept and everything, you could do a lot of crazy stuff in here. Let's see if we could do 10,000 files and uh, system should be able to handle it.
There you go. It has 11,000 files in it because uh, the thousand files were were previously, and then we use the same command fx. So it overwrote another thousand files in it. Did you get it? Why is it like 1100 now? 11,000. 11, oh, we overwrote them. Yeah. All right. Okay, what is this command gonna do? What is that? What delete, you delete the whole file. Yeah, delete everything. See, oh, we, we put in so much effort and everything, we have 11,000 files in it. One simple command, it, it removed everything. It didn't even give you the warning because we are using a recursive and force. All that, all that, uh, So it just created like 10 files here. But if you want to remove like RM, then asterisk, at least this command will tell you, do you really want to remove this? You push so yes. now like uh, Zephyr 4N, no. uh, 4IN, uh, it's like something where, which you ha we have to memorize it, yeah, for any kind of file. Just, this is the command, 4IN. Yeah, it's a for loop, I think, uh, let me show you here. Instead of I, you could use anything in there. Uh, let's see, G. Or G in. So what G is doing is, is just a placeholder. And when it run, actually runs the command, the for loop is going in there and picking up one. And then placing it here. Dollar G. This command is valid too. It's just the same concept. See? But uh, here my question, like, uh, how they, like, they get it, like, this is only as a, to create file, not directory, because you would do touch fx. Yeah, let's try mkdir, see if it's going to work. I haven't tried it before, but. Mm. Directories. So the uh, placeholder command is in here in between. So you get the idea. Do mkdir and then you do this. Dx only the name, the starting name of the file or the directory. Yeah, yeah, you could give anything you want. You like, uh, you could do Bashar. Yeah, the trick is just for the dollar sign to... Yeah, dollar sign and the G, and then this letter. If you put like G here, and if you put I here, it wouldn't know what you're doing. So let's do that if it's going to do... It says I can't carry it. What are you talking about? It, it went as much as far as to like... The command got executed all the way till here. And then when it's time to like put this file in the placeholder is looking for G and you have I in there. So that's why I gave you an error. So let's do X for X in. So just again, like uh, what you mean by this X or G or uh, like this is just space. Yeah, this this is a placeholder. So what for for loop command is going is when you say there is it's a loop. Sir. It's called iteration. You have to remember for. You have to declare it for x. X is a variable. You could give anything here for x in. So each time when you have this. Uh, uh, Curly brackets in here in each time what will happen is x will become one and then put that one in here. 
we have x here and x here, right? It will become one here. Then it's one is done. So then it's going to go in there and then go for number two. So x will become two here and then we'll put two in here. Then it will go up until 10, 10. whatever the number is. Hence you will get this off. So the last one we just ran was this one here. So it created this. Is it making any sense or uh, you want me to go over again? I think I should yeah, go over again. It makes sense. Okay, so this is the format. You kind of have to remember this, or write it down somewhere. Okay. Uh, Bashar, give me a, instead of X, uh, what do you want to use? Anything, you can put, for example, A. Okay, A. You have and to then change. what do you think? Uh, you have, you to, have change to change like A. Here. Where? Where do you have to change A? Yeah, after the dollar sign, change the X to A. Okay, you got it. So each time it goes in here, in this uh, parenthesis, for A, it goes in here, you pick up one, and then put one here. Then it goes in here again and pick up two, and then put two in here. And then the moment it's getting two, uh, the command is getting executed. So this so, command yeah, you, you will have 10, 10 directory, uh, like from B1 to B10, yeah. the, their name. Mm -hmm. So it will be B1, B2, B3, B4, all the way till 10. There you go. You yeah, have B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, it has to be same letter because it's take the loop inside the same what you put in the beginning. Yeah. So exactly, it's looping. It's called iteration, the correct term, and the looping is the generic term. Uh -huh. So the love sign it's to um, to fill the number. Yeah, this letter A is filling up in here. Yeah, I know, but I mean, the dollar sign, um, it will give... Uh, yeah, like... dollar sign will, uh, the moment, I mean, in programming, there are some reserved, you know, the special characters are reserved to do special things here. So there is no other way you could use a dollar sign other than dollar sign, you cannot use anything else, then it will crash. Most of the time in programming, dollar sign is used to represent instead of that, use this. That's what the dollar sign is used as. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So. Let me go ahead and put that in there. And then now, uh, what else we went over? So I think that's it for now. Okay, so let me do LS here. RM hyphen RF and the asterisk. It won't even ask you for if you want to remove this. So let me create some files here. I want to show you the how to use the range. And let's see. Yeah. 
we need to change like to touch file or directory yeah i'm making a file you thanks <laughs> okay and i have this here right 10 10 direct trend file <laughs> So there is another command to search for it or do a list. What you could do is type file and then you use uh, the square brackets and you want to see uh, the file between three and uh, you do like a dash and then you do uh, between eight. So we'll see what comes up here. So what it does is it you're telling uh, the command look for the file that starts with file and then the ending part uh, numbers are like from three to eight so it brought up three three four five six seven why it take zero also because in here i told only uh, bring files from three to eight it's a range i know but you there is file zero if you see five where is file zero? It's 10, not file zero, it's 10. Look at the last one in the... This is nine. After seven. This is eight. It looks like a zero on your screen? No, no, I'm talking about the result, uh, Zafar. When you mention enter, like... Uh, Here? Yes. Yeah. That's eight. Oh, six, seven, yeah, okay. Do you have the screen zoomed in? Yeah. You can zoom, zoom on the screen, so we make sure you have you have uh, good settings there. Are you okay now? It doesn't look any different. Does it look zero to you too? No, I, I can I can see that it's no, eight. That's okay. Yeah, it's eight. Yeah, but it when you made any changes I, I don't see I don't see the display looks any different. no no I didn't make any changes I just asked Bashar to make changes on his screen oh okay on his screen. so how do you do that again how how do you um how do you adjust the you do ls you could do ls no, no, no. No, I'm saying the magnification on the screen. I I just don't know. I you just have to do it on your own. Uh, if I have to do it, I have to you click on the, the screen. Button. There's a slider at the bottom. Yeah, there's a slider at the bottom. There you go. You have it. Looking for it. So if like if you click on the screen, it should bring up a menu on the bottom. There's different like views you can get, and there's a slider on the right side. So if I hover over it with my mouse, um, it just says current speaker only, current speaker active, active participant, participant video. Launch your, launch your team viewer and give me the number. What, what do you mean launch team viewer? I, I want to connect to your screen and take a look. What do you see? You cannot see clearly or what's the problem? 
I I would just like to be able to um to make it a little bigger. Yeah, give me the t launch team viewer and give me the number connection your ID. Okay, I'm gonna start sharing now. No, no, don't share, don't share. That's okay. gonna just give me so a team you, viewer. I I don't know what you mean by team viewer. Don't you have like a remote connection team viewer connection? I thought uh, I connected to your computer once, didn't I? Yeah, you did, but I thought it was just through Blue Jeans. Uh, I do. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and share your screen. Okay. All right, share. Okay. Yeah, you see that slider there? That's the one he was talking about. You could like move it to left and right and make it uh, zoom in and out. No, I don't see it where. I could see it. Okay, I'm moving my mouse around. Do you see I'm moving my mouse around? I, I don't see it. Do you have a double dual screen or single screen? I uh, just have a single screen. Okay, I just minimized everything and I'm going to open it again. Yeah, click in there. And then do you see the slider there? No. You're talking about no. the slider down in the left side? Yeah, but what you have to do is close this, close this, uh, uh, just put, a, put an X there. Yeah, that way you would have a better screen. Okay. But where's then, the slider? Uh, so the slider will come back up when I when I share my screen. Okay. Let me let me share my screen and then we'll see if the slider is going to come back. Okay, I have to stop sharing mine. No, no, yeah, okay. Okay. Now you should see a slider there. Do you see it? This? The yeah. I can't the see a screen anymore. Oh so. yeah, right. Yeah, you can see it. <laughs> um yeah, there's there's like this thing. Uh it's like in the middle and it looks like a a rectangle and it has like different buttons on it, but I don't see anything for um for increasing this the size. Yeah, uh, Abdelmalik, I, I Abdel, nice. Abdel Malik, if you look yes. at the left side, if the screen down, the blue yeah. color, yeah, just try to take it right and left. Okay. Well, like continent and people, content and people. Did are you, you are you seeing my screen right now? No. Okay. What would you do to see my screen? Bring that, uh, bring that bully jeans up. Oh no, I'm sorry, I am, I am, I'm seeing this. Yeah, I can see it, but okay. I don't. Okay. But is so, it much better than before? Uh, it, it looks the same. What, what is the same? I mean, is it small, very small, uh, or you yeah, like it's small. bigger? Right. Are you using uh, the Blue Jeans app or what are you using? Yeah, I'm using Blue Jeans. Are you using the website or the app? Um, I think it's the app. Uh. All right, let's, uh, we'll continue on here. I'll, uh, I'll uh, work with you offline and we'll take care of that later. Okay. Okay, so let's move on. So, let me see if I could demonstrate the cut command. Okay.
So I deleted all the files that starts with uh, asterisk. So let me cat cut command cut. Okay, so there is a command called cut. And uh, it goes uh, exactly the way it is. So you have to type cut and you have to type D. And then uh, you have to, maybe it's uh, looking for delimiter. So let me use the delimiter. And then hyphen F1 and three. I'm, I'm just using this um, or the input file or output. Okay, let me use small f. Okay. Okay, so I have this file output, right? There is a file output here. And let's take a look uh, in that file what we have. That output. Uh, you know what, before that, let me explain you what a redirect is. Uh, give me one sec. Okay, uh, this is a redirect. Am I talking about the redirector? So we already learned once, right? Uh, what a redirector is uh, greater than uh, sign once, and uh, we already learned something like this, right? Cat one greater than sign and two greater than sign. Yes. Do you remember that? So yeah, yeah. So one greater than sign is uh, nothing but uh, so uh, ls ls hyphen l right, and when we hit enter, we'll give we are we are getting the output of this file here. So, but instead of that, we do this. Instead of, uh, instead of getting this on our screen, we are telling this result, this result that came out, output, and we're using this redirect. This is actually a redirect. The way we used it with the cat command is, uh, you know, one uh, simple ridiculous way to use it. But in, in general, what you want to do is if you know that your result is going to be huge, uh, I have to create a Okay, let me I'm going to create about 20 files, okay? Okay, let me remove this file also. I'm going to start fresh. Right now I'm creating um, about 20 files that uh, that starts with uh, b1 b b1 all the way to b20 so when okay. i do ls it's here right and if i do ls and l okay what i'm doing next is uh, we have about 20 files here okay when i did ls hyphen l it came up on my screen, okay? So now what I'm telling is no, 
I but this is I directory uh, uh, Zephyr, not file. Yeah. It's it's okay. Why? Direct. Okay, these are directories, right? I did lsfnl and it it came up in the display here. Okay, so but what I want to do is I want to capture this and save this to a file, the output. So what I'm going to do is uh, give it a name. Output. Don't don't think of output is like a specific name. You could give like uh, any name, any any file you're creating. Like okay, my output. So when you run this command, this command is same thing as this command here. So when you run this here, it will it will show all this. But when you add this. Uh, thing here one greater than sign okay what is going to do is all these commands all this output is going to go and be written in this file so this file doesn't exist this file doesn't exist at the moment so what's the what's the general uh, rule of thumb if it doesn't exist it will create one will would create you agree it, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's uh, hit enter. See, normally when you hit LSFNL, it will all these uh, twenty lines will show up. But now, where did all these twenty lines went in? It went in and it's sitting in there. It has written, it has written in there the result of this. The result, in other words, output is written into the file. Okay. So let me clear this. So let's go ahead and uh, read the file. You could do either do cat, and you could uh, read the file here, but it's going to display display that in your on your screen. But if you want to like read and take a look or a deeper look, you could do this vi output, and this is where all this here you could edit it too. Okay, let me just do this. So when you have this here, this has a value to it. Usually it's one. So we have greater than sign. Its uh, value is one. Okay, so but when we run the command here, we're not giving the one in front of it right we're not giving one in front of it but we could get away without giving one this is i mean some of these things in linux uh is only the logic within the linux because you just have to remember those or you just have to play around exactly the way it is so when i hit enter Instead of typing uh, one greater than or just typing uh, without one greater than is going to be the same output because what, whatever we are doing the output is called standard output. Let's go ahead and take a look again and uh, see. Yeah, so we kind of have deleted this right it or we deleted this one and uh, the last line. So it overwrote it. What is what is it telling me when you when I overwrote it? That means the command ran successfully. So when you're running this command like this, is actually you're running this command. You're putting one in front of it. So the value for greater than one is greater than one is actually a standard output. Okay. When we did regular LF LS hyphen L, this is the displayed come up. Okay. But 
we are doing uh, using a redirect. When we using the redirect, we are using whatever the output that comes out. Put it in the file here. Everyone with me or are you guys confused so far? Yeah, I understand. Yeah, we are with you. Okay. I think uh, Zafar, you go through this before that the redirecting. Uh, yeah, I, you, yeah, you're right. But there are like two more I want to introduce to you right now. So this is this is very important, and this will definitely somebody will definitely will ask you in the interview. Uh, in a moment, I'm not going to spoil it, but I will tell you what they're going to off ask you in the interview when I'm done with this year. Uh -huh. So this. Uh, redirect this is called a redirect greater than sign is called redirect you redirecting it to redire redirecting the results into my output somewhere else so the one greater than sign is called standard output it's called standard Okay. Okay, this is standard output. Okay. So and then we have something called input also. If there is an output, there is an input also. Okay, and uh, input is Okay, it doesn't make sense right now, but I'm I'm gonna explain you real good. This word document editing is driving me crazy. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so what I have here. I'm uh, asking it to go into the output. So I explain output. Okay. But I could have a input also, right? If there is output, I also have an input. So how am I going to use uh, the input command? Uh, let's see here. The input is, uh, let's see.
Okay, let me try this here. Oh. All right, so when I'm using this, uh, the reverse uh, greater than sign or less than sign, what is less than sign refer to now? This is something new now. This greater than sign was output. Now the less than sign is input. So, you remember the grep command right grep is a uh, it's grabbing whatever you tell us to grab from where you grabbing from go and read those file which is uh, here so this file could be any any name it could be bashar it could be abdul malik or chris or yakub so we already have so what this command is doing is it's uh, going in and um, taking the input from this file it's going and reading that file and looking for b10 and it's bringing that back okay let's see if it's going to bring a 1046 so we could do grab okay 1046 and then uh, we are telling it to use this input file input file and the name of the input file is my output and then we'll hit enter so it went in through this file and look for all the instances that we told it to okay all right so is it confusing yet anybody let me go ahead and edit this Let me let me just delete some lines in here so that it's not that confusing. Okay, so we have so many lines here, but let me do. Uh, Box one, box two, box three. Okay, I'm using a grab command. What grab command is? It's grabbing. You're using a grab command to do what? Grab box and then uh, one. And then what you telling that command to grab box one from where? You have to tell him where to grab it from. So you're gonna use the standard input file. When you tell him, it's telling go, and then when you give the moment you give the symbol, and then you have to give the name, go in this file. So this command is going to go in this file and then look for this instant and grab it and give it to you on the screen. There you go. Or you could manipulate it here. So it grabbed everything that starts with box because we gave it an asterisk. Any questions? And then, you know how sometimes uh, you get an error on the screen? Oh, let's see here. I didn't, I'm surprised it's giving you that.
Okay, so we I asked him to look for something that starts with ball, and then there's nothing in there, so he didn't give you anything. But sometimes it gives you the error message, right? So what we could do is we could filter out the error message. So for us to filter out the error message, we use the greater than sign. So we have this time around, we have to give the num uh, number two and then greater than sign is So there are three things now. One is uh, input, output, and error. Okay. Uh, let me try to generate an error. How do I generate an error? Okay, here's the thing. So, when you use greater than, greater than sign, what it will do is, it will capture the errors and it will filter it out. Okay? So, what did I do here? When I do cat, when I do cat here, right? Is gonna what is gonna give you error y because uh, because the b anything that's starting with b is a, a folder here. So remember, Chris, you were you you were cutting the folder and you were getting the error message, right? Yeah. Okay, so I did this on purpose. I carried this and then gave it the uh, error message. So let me remove this file. Okay, so when I cat this file, when I cat the directory, it's giving us an error. But when I cat when I cat uh, uh, my output, it won't give you error, right? Because it's a file, so it's reading what's inside this file. It's gi giving you the output here. So let's do this here. Cat, and then I'm going to do asterisk. So when I do cat asterisk, what, what, do you, what do you think it's going to do here? Uh, it's going to look for anything. Show you all the, yeah, all the gonna, file. Yeah, yeah it's going to read all the files in here. Right. Okay, see all of them, all these are like, almost all of them are directory except That's this one. Yes. So it will give you, it will give you these many errors, 20 errors. And then, uh, then uh, one successful uh, error. So it will give you one successful output, okay? Let's do this. There you go. It read the last one here, this is the output, and then it, whatever the error it has, it couldn't read it, right? It's giving you on the screen. Okay, this is getting interesting here. So when you run a big uh, command, and then you said, uh, you don't want to look at the errors, okay? You just say 
any errors that are coming in my command, just put it in the file name, whatever the file name garbage. Put it in the file name garbage. So when you hit enter, it 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 went through all the all the things in here, okay? It read through all the files in here, and then whatever the errors were, it filtered it out. Instead of putting it on the screen here, we told it to put it in the file name garbage. So when I go and read the file this, name garbage, this is gonna be permanent change, yes? No, 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 no. Uh, it sounds like uh, something permanent, but you, when you start practicing it, when you start manipulating it, you would know what I'm talking about. So this is this is a really really important and turning point of this course here. So you have to stay on top of this. Uh, last class, this class is really really important and pay attention and uh, practice it. Look. And uh, you, the question you have is a very, very valid question. I'm really happy that question came to your mind. And uh, this is how you're going to stumble on things and uh, and then you're going to learn. This is like a deep, deep, deep learning. This is, these are the exact skills employers couldn't find. You know, it's the simple, is uh, for me, it's nothing, it's just simple steps. But they couldn't find uh, the talent who, who want who be able to understand this and uh, give them or work on the systems that require these kind of skills here just like to me these are like garbage skills so when i do when i read the file name garbage let's see if the file got created or not yeah see the file got file did get created here when we ran this command what is two greater than sign? What is two greater than the command will do? It's a standard error, right? It will capture all the errors and then throw it in this file. So we are we we are generating this file here. So when I do cat garbage, what is what do you expect in here? All the errors. All these errors. Not this. You won't. You won't see this. You, this is like a good, good output, and this is like a bad output. You got it, Bashar. See? How does it know? How does it know? Ca capture only the bad output and throw it in this file. When because the moment you use this to, command. Yeah. Okay, let's try this. This must have occurred to you, right? We are capturing the garbage and putting in the garbage file. What about, can we capture the good and then put it in the good file? And then when I hit enter, what are we gonna see and what are we not gonna see? I haven't tried You're myself, but see. I'm expecting a good result. You're not going to see any errors. You're only going to see the output of the successful uh, command. Okay. Uh, I think uh, we'll see all the errors. We're not going to see all the all the good uh, good output. All the good output is going to go into the file name good. Yeah, that's what I meant. It, um, in in good, you're only going to see the, the uh, success. Oh, okay. Open. Yeah, you're right there. Do you see how you could manipulate this? And then when you go and cat, good, that uh, is there. But if you don't use this part, if you don't use this part here, it will it will display the good errors and bad errors together. See? It displayed the good error and bad error. 
They're actually ca carrying the file name uh, grid also. Any questions? I do think uh, Zafar, the, the one which you mentioned now, the good, it, it works because it shows the directory as well. As we could say uh, that say that I mean, I do think the the good file it show when you mentioned this command because uh, it showed the the directory as well, and we consider the directory as a bad file, yes, because you are putting the directory in the garbage in the cat. You wrote it in the beginning on the cat point, so I don't think this good uh, command works because if you look at the result, it's take also the, the all like the directory and yeah, the yeah, files. Yeah, right now, since the, since the file is already there, this command is telling to, doesn't matter what it is, just read everything in here. So it's going, it's going to all this kind of file here also, because it's a file there at the moment. First, it did, uh, it, it went through all these files here and read through, and it's giving all the error messages. Okay. And uh, it's reading this uh, file here, garbage. And now this is where the garbage file starts and ends, I suppose. Right here, right? And then it's reading the my output, which has this. And it's reading a uh, good output, which has this. Bashar, don't get confused because just because it has these files here, this command is reading all that, okay? Oh, okay. But you could do this here. B, all the bad errors you get. <laughs> Okay, I'm expecting you guys to put a lot, lot of questions in the WhatsApp app for the rest of this week because uh, you will be getting, definitely be getting a lot of uh, questions and I am prepared to answer those. Please go ahead and uh, use this and uh, hopefully uh, you have a good understanding of this. Does it make sense so far or you guys are confused or you need like you have to go back in there and do it a couple times before you understand anything? No, it's kind of clear. It's fine. But for sure we need to, to practice more to catch yeah. it more. Yesterday and today we covered a lot and, and it's very, very important to stay on top of this. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to end the class here. Uh, I will go ahead and upload the files today. And then uh, I'll clean up a lot of stuff in here. It's like all jumbled up. And I don't think I put in the last week's notes in here too. I'll put in last week's notes, uh, yesterday and today's notes too, okay? Okay. All right. So please... Uh, practice at least two hours every day. Next week or probably next Saturday, I'm going to just go over and ask everybody to share their screen and then I'm going to ask you, uh, you know, to run any of these random commands here, not all of them to everybody. So I will definitely uh, see how your speed is going and all that. But if you have been practicing two hours every day, uh, you should be like zipping through this. Oh, from uh, from top all the way till here, where I told you to stop. Till tail or something, yeah. Till head or tail. Page, page seven, I think, yeah, page seven. So every day start from top and bottom here and then do the new practice, uh, new material, okay? Okay. Yeah.